everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome. Thank you guys for joining us. I appreciate it. I forgot to share the link out on the community tab, but I see we got quite a few of you here. So I'm glad, even though I forgot. I am Kat, the nurse slipper. I'm joined by Rod, my co-host, picking and punching. Directly below me is Brandon, the Georgia picker. And then Caddy Corner is Joshua and Whitley from Mojo Dojo. So I'm going to, neither of them have been on before, so some new faces for you guys. I'm going to make them big and let them introduce themselves and tell you where you can find them. So here's Brandon. Hey, you guys. Uh, my name is Brandon, also known as the Georgia Picker across all social media platforms. Uh, kind of story behind me, is I was ex-military, went back into the workforce, doing hard labor, started getting into reselling due to a couple other resellers on YouTube, started dabbling in it. Uh, now I've been a full-time reseller for about four years and loving every second of it. So if you guys ever want to chat with me, I'm one message away on any social media platform. And I'm um, just happy to be here. Perfect. Here's Bodo. Guys, we are from Ohio, the lowlands, down just around Cincinnati, kind of close to the Kings Island area. I'm Joshua, and that is Whitley. And, Whitley. and uh, we specialize in all things nostalgic, anything from skateboards to T-shirts, sunglasses, to whatever's cool. Just whatever's cool, we Jewelry. sell it. And also kinds of multi-faceted uh, place. Uh, I give uh, guitar lessons and teach music here as well. She has a hair salon here, so it's kind of a one-stop shop for kind of a lot of stuff. That's awesome. <laughs> if you weren't so far, I would come have you do my hair. I know. Where are you? Where are you at? I'm in Florida. I'm close to Rod. I'm two oh, hours you're, from Rod. You're doing way better than we are, dude. <laughs> I, was, I went up to Cincinnati for the reseller rally. Not the last one, but the one before I went oh, up yeah, there. That's, that's something that's super cool, dude. John is maybe 15, 10 minutes from us. So oh, yeah, we, he's right we're, down the street. Yeah, John's awesome. Cincinnati that's Actually, that's how I originally found you guys was through the Cincinnati Picker because he wanted to go pick. Um, I think he came to your house and picked through your house one time. Oh, oh, they froze. Yeah. <laughs> Linda's saying she found them through John, too. Yeah. So, yeah, same here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah John, John is an awesome, awesome guy for sure. All right. Let's see. Dancing Leaf Joanne says When ending listings and using cell similar, do you recommend making changes to the listing like keywords and pictures? I would, I would definitely say so. It definitely helps with different keywords because you might be using a keyword that's essentially obsolete or maybe kind of seasoned. Um, definitely cleaning up your listings can can make you quick sellers. Now, kind of going even further on that, sometimes even just opening up your listings and then like a day later, it'll sell. It's weird how that always happens. Uh, it happened to me like two days ago. That's the only reason why I brought it up. Uh, so yeah, definitely open, even opening them up, looking at them changing up the way you use stuff like instead of saying very clean say very good condition or just something similar like that uh using keywords will definitely help your sales for sure no joe we can't hear your mic, uh -oh. the mic. all right i'll go go to me all right so uh <laughs> let them they're having some technical difficulties yeah, we had it. yeah we they had it. it we were just talking about it so um when it comes to selling ending and selling similar I always recommend changing because eBay knows you're, if you're just ending and selling similar and not changing anything, eBay will know. All right. Um, so for me, anytime I end and sell similar, I'm lowering the price of my items because I end and sell similar anything that's been over three months listed. So if it hasn't sold in three months, either A, the market has changed, B, I priced the item too high, which is occasionally the problem, or C, I made some type of error with it or potentially that it was an item that wasn't very sought after. So that helps out by lowering the price. So in the whole object of what we do is we're here to flip things, not hoard things. So you guys want to make sure that when you guys do end and sell similar, you guys are making some type of changes, either changing title. I always change the price no matter what I do. And, uh, you know, maybe update your photos or whatever it does. Mojo, can you guys talk? Can, yeah, can you hear? Can you hear us? Yeah, you guys, you guys sound a lot better too now. Dude, I don't know what oh, happened. Good. All of a sudden, just everything shut yeah. on. <laughs> everything All right, so I, if I'm reading this question, it's saying, uh, you know, do you recommend making some changes? Yeah, to so on eBay, do you guys end and sell similar ever your listings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, and that's, again, a little tidbit we picked up from a good old Cincinnati picker a long time ago. And, yeah, it's, it changes the minute, maybe, you know, definitely the price. Like you said, a little price drop, perhaps, and uh, just something, a little Our something pictures, different. pictures, yeah, new picture. Okay. Cat. Yeah, I'm the one that eBay knows I'm not changing anything. Um, and that's 
because I have sex sales and listings. So when I end and sell similar, I do like a hundred at a time. So I don't, I should, I occasionally will go in and bulk change the price on all 7,000 listings, like drop it by a penny or two just to kind of like refresh them up. Um, I don't go through and change titles. I probably should. And you can do that bulk too without ending and relisting. You can just edit like 2000 at a time and go through. I probably, I probably should, but I, I don't. Um, yeah. But they still sell. I've noticed they still sell even if you don't change stuff. It probably isn't as much as if I change stuff, but I do still get older stuff selling that way. This is a good question. I don't, we haven't got this one very much. How do you respond when a potential buyer asks where you got an item? I worry they're trying to determine my cost so they can negotiate a better price or claim an item is fake. Yeah, that's a little, that's an interesting one. I've never actually personally had that message before. Um, I mean, personally, I would just respond is out of my attic in my garage, been laying around for a little while. Um, so that, I mean, that would be probably my answer. Uh, as far as claim an item is fake. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that could be something. Uh, honestly, as far as like messages like this, I don't really think too far into them. I just kind of say what I want to say and then, um, be reasonable with people like like what uh, Rod was saying earlier. You know, our job is to move products. So it's uh, as far as the the price of stuff goes. I don't. I'm, I, like I said, I've never had this question before, so it's very hard to figure out what exactly I would say. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pass that over to y'all. <laughs> uh, with us, it's kind of you know we always have the fallback of a lot of people bringing us stuff to the shop. So uh, and I always lead with I'm not an authenticator, man. Louis Vuitton or any of those, but they're not gonna let me in their store. Uh, a, so I'm not going to be able to tell you anything about it. Um, and a lot of the stuff, yeah, we're getting from different people. So I, I just, you know, tell them, uh, you know, it comes into the shop naturally. And that's that's the, the origin of the product. And, you know, from there, I'm just the, the facilitator to you. Yeah. Or say we have a store full of stuff. It could have came from anywhere. Yeah. And if it's something like, I got, again, it's like, I don't quite remember, but I've had it for a while. Yeah. I don't know? tend to do too much crazy stuff that I don't feel is pretty legitimate. So I really wouldn't worry about it if you have when they're asking for the item, because sometimes people are just curious. You know, I've had people ask me that because they were looking for additional items because they were like, you know, hey, I was wondering where you got this from. And I was like, oh, I got it from here. They're like, oh, OK, well, I was hoping to find more, you know, some, you know, something similar. I've had that happen before or they're trying to get additional information. Like, for example, I just sold a I think Kat had the same person that we were messing both of us. About a, about oh, a, yeah, a for Louis, the polka dotted box. Yeah, for this Louis Vuitton box. They messaged me. They were trying to figure out where I got it from and stuff like that because at the end of the day, they're trying to find out what the purse size fit the box. But they were beating around the bush with it. They were asking me where I got it from. And you know, I just told them I bought it from an estate. You know, I cleared out an estate, bought an estate, and that's where it came from. But I wouldn't worry about too much into it. You know, you can be... You know, sometimes it may work to your benefit. Um, sometimes they want to see if you have additional items there or, you know, they, um, I had a person once they were asking where we got the items from because it had something to do with their family. So they were saying, hey, you know, like they're trying to find out we had any additional information. So it just you just never know. Yeah. And I've got asked this a few times and I tell them the truth. Yeah. Like, I don't tell them, like, necessarily, like, I wouldn't be like, oh, I bought it on high bid. Um, yeah. I tell them I got it from an estate in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I, I had somebody ask about one of my Southwestern items recently, and that's where it came from. I buy out of New Mexico all the time because I love Southwest stuff, and it's not here in Florida. So, um I tell them the truth. I'll tell them. I had one person one time. It was an item that their grandfathers had been stolen in Texas. And it was one I sourced locally. So I told them, like, I got an estate sale in Florida. And they're like, oh, OK. And then they said, oh, my grandfather's got stolen. So there could be multiple reasons. But I like I have 7,000 items. I'm, I'm not hiding. I'm a reseller. Like I'm buying and reselling. My name's the same. Like they could if they Googled me, they're going to find my YouTube channel and they'll see everything of where I get it. Um, so oh, I don't, I don't worry about it. Like Rod said, there's, there's a lot of different reasons. Yeah. I've had family members buy like rare vintage art pieces that were their families, which is really cool to know, like you reconnected them, you know, with this piece of art. So I, I answer them truthfully. Hey, can I, I add something to that? 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So, 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 I, so I do a lot of storage units. Um, and this actually happened to me one time now that I, you know, uh, starting to think about it. Uh, on Facebook Marketplace, you know, whenever we list like some of the bigger items that you can't ship, um, we've actually did a unit in January of this year, or no, it was December of last year. And uh, it was like this big old butcher's block. I mean, very cool, heavy. Um, and they actually messaged us like, hey, you stole my stuff out of my unit and all this other stuff. Well, legally, I bought it. So with that messaging, uh, you know, we had our address, you know, that type of stuff. So they could have showed up at any point in time. So it's definitely depending on what business you're in, if you're just going to garage those or estate sales. But when you do storage, it's a little finicky with certain messages like that. So you definitely got to be wary. A buddy of mine actually got into an altercation, like a, a physical altercation who does storage units down in my local area. So um, if you're dealing with local stuff, definitely be wary of that. But um, but I think you are spot on. They'll be truthful, especially with the online eBay, because I mean, what's realistically going to happen? And, you know, at the, I like that some too, because at the end of the day, like I do the same thing when I go to garage sales and when I'm out sourcing, I ask people, hey, what's the backstory in this? Because one is if I'm buying purses and I, and I can't tell, you know, if they look really good and I'm just trying to get back, hey, where'd you get this? Like, oh, yeah, it was like we were in New York, but, you know, I bought it in Chinatown. Well, more than likely it's going to be <laughs> going to be fake, you know, <laughs> but I mean, they're like, hey, you know, yeah, we, we bought this when we were in Miami. You know, we went to the Louis Vuitton store and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. You know, like so have that or are people like, oh, yeah, it was just given to me. I inherited from my family. Oh, what else you have? You know, so sometimes it's just you, it's just natural curiosity that we do as resellers. We want to dig down a little bit deeper because we get more information we get. We can help benefit, you know, maybe make a bigger deal or, or something along those lines. Yeah, stories have the fun, too. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. may keep it on the yeah, lowdown. Yeah, and I'll put I may stories. keep it on the lowdown if it was out of the trash. If I pulled yeah. like, you know, <laughs> the, the car. Oh, you out know the, the dumpster back behind. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not gonna give up my spot. You know. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. No, that's why I said like I wouldn't be like, oh, I got it on high bid from X Y Z auction yeah. that I buy from every single week. This and uh, it's so funny. And the, the owner knows me because I, I literally, I buy from him every single week in New Mexico. Hello, son. And, um, okay. I just plugged mine in. Here you go. What percentage on? Mine's on 34, but I was going to use my hotspot because I was getting crackly, but it's okay. Go ahead. Plug your phone in. So, I didn't do it I know 34% doesn't justify using the plug. I got it. Um, so, <laughs> so the boss has spoken. I, like he will message me at like 6 a.m. and it's 3 a.m. in New Mexico. And I'm like, what are you doing awake, dude? Like it's 3 a.m. Oh, I'm here packing. I'm like, do, do you ever sleep? Like we're friends now because he knows. And I bought like a bunch of big pictures last time. And I'm like, I'm sorry about the pictures, but I really liked them. Like a bunch of artwork. And he's like, I'll find a box. It's okay. Like he's just used to me at this point. Um, but I would, there's no way. Like I wouldn't tell you guys, like I, I'm not going to tell you where, like I, I help people with high bid, but I will not tell you which auctions I buy from. And I have several that I buy from very, very regular because that's just a little, a little too much information, but yeah. Um, oh, we didn't erase it. Patty is asking me, have I, speaking of, have I ever thought about opening up my own auction house business? I have. Um, and I actually been thinking about it a little more recently because I really have a lot of inventory and I see all these auction houses selling a thousand items a week. And I'm like, Oh, and I wouldn't get as much for it, but like some of my older inventory, I was thinking like, I, I, I might one day venture to like the high bid side to move things and I could do whatnot, but I feel like I would honestly get more money on high bid where it sits there for a week, you know, and people can look at it a week. They can look it up. They can comp it where on whatnot, they've got 15 seconds to decide. So Yes. Is the, yes is the answer, but not anytime soon. That would be, I would need more staff. Like if we sold a thousand items, <laughs> uh, Dalton is on spring break. That is why he's out here. He's out of school this week. Um, so if we sold a thousand items, I would have to have somebody here to pull the items, like meet the people when they're picking up. Plus we would have to pack the items for, out of state buyers. So it would be a pretty, what are you doing in here? You know what he I wants. Tip, listen, no, no. 
Oh, he he doesn't know about it, but I'm going to hold on. I'll download it while I'm telling the story. <laughs> so last night, um, Dave was doing a jewelry show and he had messaged me and asked me about some of the jewelry. And so when I saw a show come up, I'm like, I have to go. So here's Dave trying to figure out how to show this jewelry. He's never sold jewelry before. And like, he's dropping it. He's trying to set it on a longer burger basket. And I am cracking up. Like Tim over the years was in there. I'm like, I was like falling off the couch laughing at Dave. And I'm like, this is amusing. Like, I'm glad I clicked into this show. So I tipped Dave 10, 10 bucks last night because I was like, no, I give you an E for effort, dude. Like you're trying. He ended up doing like a big lot. And then he's like, OK, I'm done. Um, so I don't know if you'll see Dave selling any jewelry anymore. I am going. We have something very special for you that I don't think, you know, we have. And I am going to upload it to StreamYard right now so I can play it for you. Nobody knows. And I was told I have to give this person, what are they called, Rod? When Swingers? you get like from, from the book, no, like from like, like book rights. What is it called? Copyright? Or, oh, no. you have to give him uh, um, What's it called? Know. Publish. You guys know what I'm yeah. licensing? You get the license for it? No, no, no. No, it's no, nice. like pay him. What's it called? A royalty. Is anybody yeah, helping me in the chat? We both have royalties Nobody's at the same time. Royalties. Royalties, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, royalties. so I was told I have to pay royalties for showing this. He knows I have it, and I'm going to play it right now. Here you go. That's great. I can take off the glasses for that one. I try to get up close. Yeah, it's kind of more My eyes against the screen for that. You, you may be blind now. Sorry, Mojo. You may be blind, buddy. <laughs> no, no. I was just enjoying the view. You're trying to get a better look. Yeah, I was trying yeah, to look at the chat. Look it all in. That's that was wild. That was insane. <laughs> that, that was made that by Vaughn Thrifty Rich, by the way. <laughs> I know. It's been working out for sure. And yeah. with, the, with the pineapple exit, too. That's Yeah, the pineapple awesome. at the end was... <laughs> Big rock. Was the, mm -hmm. Chef's kiss. Yeah, a normal day yeah. at the beach with Kevin. Yeah, for sure. Looks fun. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't think I don't think Dave knew that we had that. I, <laughs> I, I told him we had something surprise. So tell him to show up tonight for it. So, but yeah, yeah I, I showed it to Kevin. <laughs> Who was did, it that was? Did you make somebody that? Somebody asked for that. Somebody somebody requested Kevin as a mermaid. Yes, merman. <laughs> merman. Yes, merman. Or okay. mermaid. He spins you know, both ways. Be. It doesn't really yeah, matter. Yeah, he's swinging. He's just yeah, he he's got swinging. Tail swinging, dude. That mer yeah. tail don't matter. I don't, I, mean, think it, I don't think. I don't think. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know. You know. He owns Bonanza. Kevin owns Bonanza. It's a secret. Yeah, it's a yeah, secret. He, a party site, dude. he owns Bonanza. Who else in the right mind would name a reselling site Bonanza other than Kevin? What? No one. <laughs> it's dirty little secret. You heard it here first, people. Isn't that kind of like <laughs> like a, kind of like a bizarre term, like you know, like bizarre, or like fair, like a bonanza blowout sale, and that kind of that, or no? Am I thinking like a bonanza? Yeah. Or having a bonanza? Or the bonanza yeah, TV like, show? Yeah, yeah, like a bizarre. That's yeah, that kind yeah. of is what it reminds me. I'm gonna try to of. use that in my my vernacular, though. I'm gonna try to bonanza buy something. Yeah. I feel like it's not the used in today's conversation. <laughs> no. <laughs> I had to put this up here because I'm a Floridian and like. I turn the heat on if it's 69 in the house. Like my husband gets so mad. I'm like, I want it at least at 70. So I have to do it while he's not watching and then I'll turn it off real quick. But I like 51, I would definitely, I would have a heater on. Dalton wants to start a fire when it's 70 outside. He's definitely a little Floridian, but yeah. All right. Miss Linda said, does anyone know anything about Guitar Hero guitars? How can you test them to see if they work or do you just sell untested? Yeah, so I think for me, the saying is when in doubt, part of it out if you can't test it. Um, everything from the straps to the handles to anything that sells. Obviously, the dongles. If you have the dongles, you can definitely test them if they're 
Xbox 360, Xbox, they tend to connect to the actual console, so you can test them that way. But if you have no way to test them, you can definitely sell them as a untested or for parts and repair. Um, would probably be the easiest way to do it. Um, sometimes, depending on how many you have, or if you just look at a guitar and you hear rattling, you're probably not going to work. So probably just sell the whole thing. Um, but if you're definitely have like a, an abundance of them and you can't test them, I would definitely part them out because I believe the straps go for like 10 bucks a piece. The the long nozzles go for like, I don't know, 15 bucks a piece. Um, so there's definitely ways to to maximize your profits if you can't uh, test uh, uh, Guitar Heroes guitars. <clears throat> Mojo? Go. Oh, no sound. Okay. I'll take no this sound one. again. Um, so the rule of thumb is for Nintendo Wii ones, you don't need a dongle. You don't need to hook it up to the system because the the Guitar Heroes from the Nintendo Wiis use the Nintendo Wii controller and actually goes inside the guitar. So 95% of the time when I get those, I don't test them out. I just sell them as is, and I have no problems with them. And the big reason for that is because if the problem arises from the actual remote, not the actual guitar. When it comes to like the PlayStation ones, if you're using like PS2 or the original Xbox, they have a cord that plugs plugs directly into the system. So you have to have the systems to test them out. If not, you just sell them as untested. And then when it comes to the like PlayStation 3 and um, you know, Rock Band, Rock Band needs a dongle, uh, the guitar hero needs a, a dongle. So what the dongle is, it's a little box like this big. It plugs into the system and that allows you to use your your guitar wirelessly. That's also the rock band for like the um, for the drum kits and stuff like that. If you have that little dongle, okay, that little dongle alone can sell anywhere from sometimes like fifty to hundred bucks just for the dongle because everyone finds the guitars, everyone finds the drum sets, everyone finds the kits, but they lose the dongle. So those dongles sell really well. So if you guys find those dongles, be on the lookout for those because I flip those all the time when I find them. Um, you know, if you don't have it, like Brandon said, you can pull it out. The straps will sell. Everything else will sell. Or just sell it as untested because people do buy them the six. And that might be the easiest thing for them. And they're pretty easy to ship. Majority of the guitars at the very – where the um, where the neck meets the actual base of the guitar, there's a little button you push and it actually detaches. And it's real easy to ship in the box. They're like three pounds to ship. And you just put it in a box like 20 inches and you put a diagonal. And you drop a bubble wrap and ship it out. So I'd ship a ton of those. I'm actually just sold out my all my Wii ones. I'm actually just got one this week, and I'm going to list. But that was pretty much it. Yeah. But I would go. I was going to say, sorry, cat. I was going to say, go and eat. Oh, go, go and eat. Which dongle sold uh, listings for the dongles? It'll blow your mind what they go for. Yeah, I've only sold a couple, and I haven't sold any in years. And I just sold mine untested, um, and I did, never had any issues with them. We got a new member, Carol. All right, thank you for joining. We do, um, if you guys don't know, we, I do, once a month I do listing reviews for your eBay listings. Every other Saturday, which is this Saturday, um, we do live sourcing. So I'll look on auctions in your area for stuff for you and tell you what I would buy and what I would pay and all that fun stuff. And then every other Monday we do live shipping. This, and it, it is this coming, up Monday too. So there's a lot coming up. I'm going to give you the sea turtle. Oh, there's Mojo Dojo back. All hey, right. Here's All a right. Do we have it? Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. You got yeah. it. We can hear you. We've got a complete switch over now. We're on a completely different device. Good Lord. Let's Drew's, Drew's kept acting wonky last week too, though. Drew was having a bunch of issues last week too. So I don't know what's going on. It was telling me to like all my apps can't have access to my camera and mic it's except like, for Safari. I'm like, like other, how am I supposed yeah. to find every app and dismantle <laughs> and tell it no? Where? Boom. Technology. I digress. <laughs> All right. Here's a turtle for you, Miss Tara. Um, that's like a fall Cute. asleep. And if you guys don't know, they have a, a vintage clothing shop, guys. So if you guys have any vintage clothing questions, now is yeah. the time to ask. Or if you guys ever had a question about ordering a brick and mortar, now is the time to ask as well. So Yeah. We're in the store right now. You can see yeah, all of the racks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, you could, like, show stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, it goes deep. It's we a, could do it's a whole. A, <laughs> it's probably why the Wi-Fi is bad out here. We're, like, in a cave. Yeah. So. And out in the field, you know. <laughs> 
the lowlands. Larry wants to know how does Etsy international shipping work? I do not sell on Etsy, so I have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to pass up to the top. Throw that up there. Rod. <laughs> Ah, it's okay. Cat, Cat quit selling on Etsy last year, but I had international shipping when I was on Etsy, and you just turn it on and put the weight, and it'll calculate it just like it does on eBay. And Etsy has a international shipping hub just like eBay does, so you ship it to their hub, and then they ship it. But all you have to do when you're doing your shipping options is turn it on, and that's it. So pretty, it's pretty easy. And if you have any questions, Larry, go see Handmade and Beyond on, on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, Lloyd specializes in Etsy. That's all he does on his channel is just teach people about Etsy. So he can answer a lot of questions you may have. But. Um, Faith wants to know if we always have best offer turned on. Absolutely. Uh, every single one of my 2,300 listings, somewhere around there, has uh, best offers on them. Um, the way I look at it, if I store something for five dollars and let's say on average it goes for a hundred, somebody sends me an offer for 90, 85, it's five dollars and 85 rinse and repeat. Um, again, what Rob was saying earlier in the live stream, our job is to move product, not to sit on that hoard stuff. Uh, unless it's you know, occasional stuff I'll hold on to, but um, yes, yeah, let's say some of the cooler collectibles. But um, but absolutely, if your if your goal is to make money to make this a full time job, um, or even doing a part time and you have very little money into it, absolutely take a very reasonable offer to where you're happy with the price and uh, the buyer's happy with the price. But uh, if you're firm on something, nothing wrong with that either. Hey, with us, it's all about, you know, uh, moving stuff, getting tons of in inventory in and out, and we're about the fast nickel over the slow dime. So keep moving. Yep, you offers accepted, offer on. always. I like that saying. I like that. Yeah, so... <laughs> I always like to say is, you know, so I do have best offer on. I, at one point in time, I didn't. I turned it on. But, you know, you want to have the interaction with people. Just when I go to yard sales, if I lowball somebody, they're going to tell me no. But it opens up dialogue. And then I can counter. They can counter me, you know. So I, people get mad that they get lowballed or they put like a, they put a floor on their uh, what you can offer somebody. I don't have a floor of mine because I want that dialogue because someone may I have a hundred dollar item up. Someone may send me twenty dollar offer and I'll send them a message. Hey. Sorry for, you know, I can't go that low, but I'm willing to work with you. And then maybe sit, counter them at 80. And then, you know, they may counter me back at 60. And then we can work something out for 70 bucks, you know. So you just never know. Um, but I always like to say it's best to have it on. It keeps your store active. keeps people there looking. It gives them a chance to see what you have. But also, too, is remember, you're not, you always don't have to sell to the end user. So you can sell to other resellers. You can cut people deals. If people are buying one thing, they may send you, hey, if I buy this, can I send you a take half price on that? They just... Gives a lot more possibility. So I highly recommend keeping the best offer turned on. So I stole Scott Chiching King's message from if people offer me 50% or less, I like I'm a decliner. I'm not like, and he basically to sum it up, he said like at less than 50% of asking, I'm afraid we're too far apart to negotiate. Have a great day. And that's exactly what I do. Um, either they'll come up or they'll go away. Um, because if they're sending me an offer of $30 on a $100 item that's newly listed, I want 90. Like 90 is my bottom. And if they're at 30, I don't feel like we're going to reach 90 without me countering them at 100 and them trying to get the point, you know. Um, yeah. And if they're if they're above 50 percent, even if it's a little bit, I will counter and I have had them accept but at under 50, I just feel like we're too far apart, you know, and I have somebody that's been doing that on a jacket that I have and they're going up by 50 cents. Like they offered me 33 on a $70 vintage jacket. I countered them at like 68, hoping to get the point across and they came up to like 32 50 and they have one <laughs> offer left now. One not offer, and they like not get dignified with a response from me. Yeah, uh, like yeah. you typically won't even you don't respond. Get with the it's just like, yeah, it's no big deal. Like just you, like you got to shoot your shot. I understand why they're doing it, but yeah, nah. you might. Yeah, get I'm like no. do it. You know, but yeah, well, I mean, people not accept them. That's why they keep doing them because some yeah. sellers, you know, they take it, but. Uh, I told them because today they did it again and they have one offer left. I said, look, if you really want this jacket, you have one offer left. You need to come up significantly and like <laughs> left it. That jacket would look great on you, Kevin. You might be able to fit. You're kind of small. 
I, with I a might baby go gap get it. Jacket. It's, a a baby gap jacket? it's a SpongeBob SquarePants jacket. <laughs> it's a hundred dollars. It's like seventy, but it's a kids. Oh wow, kids. that's so Kevin's like kids Kevin size, is. right? <laughs> oh yeah, Kevin. Everybody saw your merman because Dave sent me two bucks. You're cheap, buddy. That's not going to be much in royalties, my friend. <laughs> Better talk to Dave. All right, Funny Linda. Thing is he, probably, he probably used the trash of cash money anyway, so he used Kevin's money to buy it. So. <laughs> Kevin's paying his own royalties. That, that's perfect. Oh, All right. Linda sent $5. Thank what are we going to do? Let's do the pillow fight since Dalton's in here. Here it goes. He's laughing on the floor. The, my, my last video too, he was back there rolled in a blanket saying he was a burrito and Brooke came in from nursing school and starts attacking him. So I just like moved out of the way and let it keep recording them. Tifton wants to know, Brandon, where are you from? They're from Tifton. So I'm actually originally from Savannah, Georgia. I always say I'm, I live in Savannah, even though I'm just like just North of it. Uh, Savannah is one of the places in Georgia. Everybody, for the most part knows, but nobody would really know it. Uh, nowhere. Like I live in, uh, uh, Guyton, Georgia, you know, that's actually where I live. And everybody's like, where's Guyton at? That's well, like my town. Canada. Nobody knows where it's at. Right. <laughs> you know what? That video that you just saw was in a hotel on Tybee Island. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So we got, we got married on Tybee Island. And then last spring break, me and Dalton and Brooke went up there. Dalton had to see Blippi, his favorite YouTuber ever. So we drove to Savannah to see Blippi. Let me tell you how expensive that was. Um, did y'all go like downtown or anything? No. I uh, am. I do not like crowds. I do not like big cities. I live in the middle of nowhere for a reason. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. I, we, like, I don't even, like, we stayed on Tybee and hung out. Like, Tybee I'm good with. I'm good with, like, the little island community, but... I, I grew up in Jacksonville, so I grew up in a big city, but I have gotten used to quiet and no traffic. So, like, I love sourcing in Miami. I go to Miami, and I will deal with it because I like sourcing there, but I'm, like, it's like going through Atlanta. I'm, like, gripping the steering wheel like I'm a race car driver. And right. I drive like it. I can hang with them. I can drive like that now. I'm not scared of them, but I just don't like it. All right. right. <laughs> Cindy wants to know where's your favorite place to source. Oh, uh, I don't even know a favorite place. Um, because I don't really do a lot of thrifting. I do a lot of storage units and estate sales. And, and so that would be it. That would be your answer. Not necessarily yeah. a place. I think they want right. to know like what type. Right, right, and well, that's one. And, and it's kind of hard because our storage units that we found over the past two years have been absolutely incredible as far as volume, exactly what it is. But lately I've been enjoying me some estate sales. We've been killing it in estate sales lately. So I'm kind of mixed feelings. I love my garage sales, but I think I find some of my higher end stuff doing, you know, I'll probably say storage units because there's a little bit of that gambling factor uh, in that adrenaline rush when you first bid and you win one. Uh, so I'm, that's going to be my answer. I'm going to lock it down. I'm going to say storage units, but a close second estate sales. Yeah. Dude, we are we are parasitic. We are the flea people, man. I was gonna we, say we have two of the best flea yeah, markets. We are flea market right here by us, really close. We just make a little. Actually, there's three. We just make a big rotation on these huge. And oh, we, there's three. Yeah, we've got such a rapport with a lot of the old heads out there that they just have the stuff set inside the truck for. They us know what kind of weird there. junk we like. So just walk around with my cart. That and... loaded up. Have the chihuahua <laughs> in there. She's chilling. I She's ready to her go. In there. She looks, she's sleepy right the, now. the other option would be just the people who bring in inventory, people like customers, just people who come in to the shop and bring stuff. We're kind of in a weird location, stuff. so there's a, at least somewhere they can come to bring stuff where we'll buy yeah, it. Yeah, it's like the Bermuda so, Triangle of Vintage here by yep. the railroad tracks. Right here, people by the railroad bring, people bring cool stuff. So I'd say flea markets and uh, our customers are bringing stuff. That's cool. I think, I think they made a good point, you know, building – building that rapport with your people at like the where you go sourcing at is so huge because they will especially flea markets they'll put stuff aside for you now like that happens to me i go to our local flea market they like, hey rod you're here they, they pulled this aside for you you know it's like that's that's a good report to have um 
So for me, my favorite is garage sales. And the reason for that is it's the highest ROI I get on items. I could get buy an item for a dollar. I could turn it into a hundred or two hundred. Love garage but sales. It's also too is it's almost a, a giant challenge because like I'm in Florida. Florida is one of the meccas right now for garage sales. Like there's I can literally there'll be 20 community sales within 20, 30 minutes of my house, you know, so on cool. this weekend. And I will literally have to map out the area. I have to try to put like strategically try to, you know, outpick the other pickers where I'm going. You what use time the I'm sale app? I, I use the art sale app. I use Facebook. I use Craigslist. I oh, use yeah. you garage get sale app. You get wild. Draw a map, dude. <laughs> yeah. And like, yeah. So I try to try Jeez. to do all that stuff, but also too is like, I like the interaction with people. That's probably the most fun I have. You know, you interact, you talk to people. And that's where I get majority of my private picks I go to come from me just interacting and telling people what I do at, at garage sales. Same thing you guys. You, know, you guys tell people what you guys do, and now you guys are getting all the stuff put aside for your flea market. Sometimes we tell them what we do. Sometimes we don't tell them what we do. <laughs> sometimes I act really stupid. If they're offering me something for super cheap, I act dumb. If I don't have them, I'm like, I don't know. Oh, this is a shirt. Right. We really like Ozzy. Never seen it. All right. <laughs> that might be high. Here we I go. don't know. Wow, you're just getting rid of it, huh? So there are times to play stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, my favorite place the source changes. Um, I'm kind of like Brandon. It's really bid. hard. Hi, hi bid. I love, <laughs> I love high bid, but since I started doing more on my second channel, I like thrifting. Cause I'm like, so yeah. I haven't, Kevin, Kevin says the best place to source is my sheds when I go to Miami. Um, mm -hmm. You could try. Well, um, you have to give him everything for nothing. I know. Yeah, yeah. Just I saying. don't negotiate very well, Kevin. I, <laughs> Neither of you. That would be funny to watch. You that would be it. kind of funny. That'd I should have a yard sale just to have Kevin come. Just to have him come and you guys fight? Oh, everybody would watch Like, that. fight it out. That would be great. Dude, I make her negotiate. I shut up. Oh, and yeah. I let her go into him. There's a couple YouTube videos on channel. She tears into him, man. I, I just, love tearing them. I don't care. I just let her go. <laughs> Well, they're being yeah, well. silly and they know it. <laughs> yeah, some of some of them it's high. So for higher dollar items, definitely high bid. For my bread and butter stuff, thrifting. Um, yeah. And that's just because where I live, like if I drove to where Rod lived, I could find a ton of garage sales. Garage sales out here are so far apart. And I never know if they're going to have good stuff because most of them don't post pictures. Now, if I see pictures posted on one that look good, I'll go. But most of them are like over an hour away. And where I know, like, if I go thrifting an hour away, I can hit four thrift stores. If I go to a yard sale an hour away, there might only be one. Like, and it might suck. And I just wasted two hours driving. So, yeah. I, I actually got a question. Uh, it's kind of similar to the, the recent question. But, like, what is your, like, best ROI? Is it garage sales, you know, uh, thrift stores? Because mine would have to without a doubt it has to be abandoned storage units um we did a train unit last year in july abandoned and, uh, yeah so like basically it's units that go for auction for people who don't pay for oh, their bills oh, oh, yeah and uh majority of it turned online because of covid and they realized oh we can make more money by keeping them online so mm -hmm. uh but yeah but we want a train unit last year uh me and a friend went 50 50 in on it and uh we paid nine grand for it and uh mm -hmm. up until now we've done over eighty thousand uh gross and oh, wow. it's absolutely great roi so for that me would personally would be abandoned storage units so i'm just curious like i mean is y'all thrift stores flea markets you know you know, y'all can um yeah take that away <laughs> i would say ours would be when we get from like i buy bulk from some of our suppliers you know that's he posts instantly on instagram that's where we have most of our followers most yeah, of our people so once we get it he posts it like well, showing when we're getting and, it and most people this, message us and, right then but yeah most of the stuff that you know we're buying in bulk like that dude i'm getting a way better deal on so it's going to bring back a good amount of chunk of money so i would say you know the, the stuff i'm buying in big old quantities right i thought return that's on it. investment mean i guess that means how much money you make it on top i was thinking like Correct. how quickly yeah. It, yeah yeah so for for me i would say you know garage sales have the biggest return on investment on single items but overall for me it's going to be private picks because when I'm going in there, I'm buying out a collection or I'm buying out a massive, like I literally did a private pick literally an hour before the show. I went and bought like a designer, like Louis Vuitton stuff, Dolce Gabbana. I bought. You don't you know, like, give me the boxes anymore. I know. I've been don't need to talk to him about that. <laughs> but I mean, I got five pairs of Do Dolce Gabbana shoes. Like I'm, 
Now, like, wow. um, so stuff like that. I don't that, want the um, shoes. I just want the boxes. You want the boxes. If you get any Gucci <laughs> loafers, bro? Any Gucci loafers? I'll pick those up. Uh, uh, no, Gucci they're all dope. Yeah, I don't have any Gucci loafers. But uh, I got tons of, like, you know, when I do private picks, you know, I go in there, I buy bulk. I buy mm-hmm. their crappy stuff. I'll buy the good stuff, you know. So that way they, you know, they, they're getting rid of everything. It works both ways. I can move that stuff to whatnot and move this stuff also. But, you know, I get a better, like he was just saying, that like, you get a better deal when you buy in bulk. And people come in, they want everything gone. And it's it's always like the little things people don't think about that add up and make the most amount of money for you. Like people always put all the value in like video games or the consoles, but you make all your money on the controllers and all the accessories, the power cords, stuff like that. Like, so when you buy in bulk, you have all the extra stuff on the side that a lot of people don't, don't factor in that can really add up fast. Yep. Yeah. And my ROI is pretty high regardless of where I get it. Uh, Cause I'm cheap. I, um, I buy, well, like we have a lot of dollar clothing stores. Like I have at least now I found more, I think I have like eight now that I could go to that 80% of their clothing is a dollar. Nice. Um, and there's one that the clothing is five cents. So oh, I geez. buy, I feel bad. Um, it's, cr- yeah, but like I they sense? take anything and put anything out. So like a lot of it is stained right. and like, yeah, literally. Yeah. so you really it's have like, to dig to find something it like decent for it. Holy. it sure. Listen, like everything in there. But I mean, I, I got a ton of stuff and they're like $12 and I'm like, what? Okay. $12. All right. Weird. Um, yeah. Five I was like, oh, I got to keep it under a hundred and it was, $12. I'm going to keep it under a hundred here. <laughs> well, because it was cash only. Like, so I was like, okay, I got a hundred bucks. Yeah, twelve dollars. Um you don't and then high bid auctions, same thing. Like I buy in bulk quant I think the big thing is bulk quantity that most of us are saying. Like, cause yeah. high bid I buy in bulk. Um and I I like the you did miss it. You gotta send me a dollar ninety nine. That's the rule. Because <laughs> I only get a dollar forty, and then I have to give like fourteen cents to Kevin. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> you missed it. Um, yeah. So I think buying in bulk when you can, but like, and everybody, we have Goodwills. Like the Goodwill prices are crazy. But if I go five minutes down the road, there's a thrift store with dollar clothing. So like a lot of people say their Goodwills are high. Look for those church thrift stores. Look for those smaller thrift stores. You might have them and not know because I've recently found four more with dollar clothes that I had no idea were there. So, oh, and the church thrift stores. The church thrift stores are great. And they're all, they're only open eight hours a week on Friday and Saturday for four hours a day. But their prices are really good. So, yeah. Um, Michelle said she just recently sold a vase and the buyer let her know she said the wrong one. The problem is at Win International, I have the right vase, but don't know how go uh, how to go about it. I would say, hopefully you're still in the chat. I, tell us if you're wanting them to ship back the wrong one yeah, or if you're just wanting to ship them the right one and then everybody can say what they would do. But let us know um, if you're wanting to get the other one back. <laughs> we, no, we, I'll run it twice. <laughs> um. Why don't we run one of the Kevins while we wait for Yeah, we'll run one one Kevin, and then we'll answer the question, and then we'll run another Kevin. Okay, here's the first Kevin. Here you go. The pineapple at the end just cracks me up every single time. (laughs) Hilarious. (laughs) <laughs> Take it everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, it's the upside down pineapple is what the Commonwealth Swinger does. So, <laughs> yeah. got the office slice. Yeah. All right, Brandon, how would you handle this? Um. So, my answer would be cut your loss, send out the other one. Um. You can usually, the way I do it, if I end up uh, shipping out the wrong item and I realize, oh, crap, I sent out the wrong item, I would cancel the uh, or end the listing on the one that I sent out. And I uh, just bite the bullet, um, send that one out. You can usually go to your shipping labels and click on the order. You can actually just print a new label. Um, just be, hey, sorry for the inconvenience. It's definitely my fault. Uh, I think we all make mistakes. We're humans. So 
it's going to, it's going to happen no matter if it happens to you or not. It might be 10 years down the road. It might be next week. Uh, it, it's going to happen. Uh, so now hopefully it wasn't like a thousand dollar vase. Now right. that can get a little tricky. Um, but absolutely. At the, end, at the end of the day, customer service does go a long way in my opinion. Um, whenever I was in the military, you know, we always, always had to be professional whenever we had like officers come in and, you know, we got to salute them and this, that, and the other. So, um, and I used to be a part of a program called hazmat. So I used to take care of like hazardous materials and the officers would come in, they'll start yelling at you and we'd be all prim proper, whatever, but customer service to, to that extent, uh, kind of brought me into like eBay customer service. So do the right thing, be a good person and just bite the bullet on that, on that sale. I got to agree, man. We're looking for, you know, lifelong customers, not single serving ones. So whatever we got to do to make, again, whatever you got to do to make them happy, we're going to do that first and foremost. Uh, and especially yeah, if we messed if up by sending the wrong thing, yeah. you get to keep whatever I'll I you, messed up I'm on. I'm going to send you out two vases. Yeah, we'll send you that and extras because sorry. Oops. Yep. If it's our Oopsie. bad, we're taking care of you. <laughs> yeah, 100%, man, is, you know, it's about making the customer happy. I would tell them to keep the other vase and I'm going to send out the new one to them, yep. you know, and then offer them a discount, anything else they want to buy in the store in the future for, you know, for nice. messing up on that, because that's a good way to try to bring them back and let them know that you appreciate them. And, you know, hopefully they'll, uh, you know, be in a buy in the future. So Michelle's saying she doesn't care about the one she sent. She, the buyer is willing to just let her refund. So if it's eBay international shipping, you'll have to go to like pirate ship and use pirate ship standard international. Cause you can't print another international label on eBay. So you would have to get their direct address to send it to, and you can use pirate ship uh, international. We actually had packages swapped uh, this weekend and I was so lucky and so thankful Two really nice buyers my employee the first three of the zip codes were the same the last two were different she swapped the labels and luckily they were both super nice I was like could I just buy a label and you send it to her and they both sent it and they're only like one city apart so they're gonna get it like super fast um, and both of them, they're like telling me thank you. And I'm like, why are you? But I mean, I was nice. I apologize. You know, I sent them a label to get it to each other. And I think if you, that works if you have two accommodating buyers, just FYI, if stuff gets switched. But if you have one that's not accommodating, you cannot do that. That has to come back to you and then go to the right person. I was lucky. They were both really nice and accommodating. Um, if it were me, as long as it were under like 150 bucks, I would tell them to keep the vase. If it was like a $500 vase that accidentally got sent, I'd probably want it back. Um, and But I would pay for them to send it back, which would be a lot. That's why I say it would need to be really expensive. And then I would send them the correct one and give them a refund for the inconvenience because now they're going to have to wait for the international shipping again. But if it was 150 bucks, like I'm going to let them keep it and I would just ship them the other one at my expense. So if she's willing to let you refund it and you're good with that, you could do it. But I would tell her like, you're willing to ship it to her if she wants it and just kind of, you know, decide. I had a cat, I had a situation like that where the weird, I was shipping out, like I print off 10 different labels and the one guy person name was like Dan Stevens. And that other person name was Dan Stevenson. So it was like almost identical names and I shipped off the wrong items. I've done that before. And then I've actually shipped the wrong items to other people. And then I tell the person, Hey, you can ship it back and I'll give you full refund. And, and I don't have the other item. I cross him. He's like, no, I'll just keep this one. Cause it was like 20 bucks more than the other item. So I just eat it. Right. No, I'm good. Was, I'll keep it. Yeah. But I was like, you know what? That's fine. It's my mistake. Enjoy that book. And, you know, and then I took care of the other customers. So you have to do what, what you have to do sometimes. And it's cost of doing business as we like to say. They will not all be nice. I will tell you, I yeah. had a switch and the guy got a hundred dollar item and he refused to give it back. He refused to give it back. And the other buyer was nice, shipped him his item. So he got his item. He said, I don't have the time and I'm not willing to go to the post office. I'm like, yeah. I sent you a label. They will come and pick it up from you. No, I'm sorry. I, I can't print it. Like he was not nice. So they are not all nice. They are not all understanding. Yeah. PSA did that. So the, the grading company that does sports cards, they shipped like a $30,000 Tom Brady rookie card to the wrong customer. That happened a couple of years ago. Yeah. Wow. And then they couldn't get a hold of the other guy. And like, 
I mean, they were going to take legal action, do whatever they had to do at that point in time. But yeah, it was like a big fiasco. But, but I mean, it happens, man. I mean, it's, you know, like, you know, yeah. we, we all make mistakes. I mean, even the big companies, when they're shipping out millions of items, you know, a year, like it happens. Good point. Even the biggest yeah. companies do that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it happens for sure. We feel so all bad. Right. Time. He pay, he paid for two Kevins. Kevin apparently is cheap, like his Tupperware that he likes to buy, and <laughs> he's only a dollar ninety nine. So here's here's another. My new most popular super chat is Kevin's butt. You have to put like a ten dollar like minimum on it now going forward, because it's gonna be Kevin requests all day long. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. All right. <laughs> and thanks again to Yvonne Thrifty Rich for making that for us, Kevin. Kevin saw it and he approved it, so I I did check with Kevin before before showing his butt on on live. Um, his butt. His butt. His butt. Obviously. Oh, Joseph was asking any updates on Honey, the blind kitty that we rescued. So we have two vets say exactly two different things. So the surgeon vet, he is going, he has an appointment this Thursday at five for the third and final decision, <laughs> third opinion for the cat um, to see if he needs surgery to sew his eyes shut or not. Because the first one said sew them shut to keep them from getting infected. And the second one said it would clog his tear ducts. So the one that would be performing the surgery was out of town. She is back and she's going to see him Thursday and we will decide then what, if anything, we are doing with the rotten, rotten cat. I, I need to upload a bit like this cat. Does he still have his eyeballs or do you have glasses? One is missing. One's completely gone. Ow. And then the other one looks like it's degrading. So the one vet said they thought it was leukemia, but he yeah. tested negative for leukemia. And then the second vet said they think he was born like that. So I need another vet's opinion. It's I like, what are you doing with this cat? Like, but he's fine. And he, like, poor Dalton, because yeah. Dalton plays with him. He attacks the crap out of And he can catch flies midair, guys. He's blind. He and can hear blind? them and catch. Can he's he's blind. He can hear. Wow. Yeah, it's. It's cr I've really been thinking about making him a friggin' like TikTok and Instagram because it's blind and he sits in the poor guinea pig and they run and they think he's playing. He can stick his paw through and he tries to swat him, but he can't see him. So oh, good. you're like He'd backing up, like looking at him. Oh, he would. If he could see, he would. Yeah. Yeah. We'd be in trouble. Luckily, the seeing cats have no interest in the guinea pigs. We're, we're oh, lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Kind of, well, two of the cages they can't get paws through. I would just have to buy another cage that paws don't fit through. Can we take a moment just to look at Mojo's dog? Like that dog is the most relaxed dog in the entire world. It's like totally <laughs> chill. This dog is the, is, is our, the bane of our existence. Uh, we probably spent ten thousand on our medical vets this, this year. Just exploded uterus, her diabetes, uterus are ruptured. You know, oh no! Going. But she's Emergency good. Look surgery. at her. Maybe she's just passing out. Yeah. She's, she's chilling. She's the shot. <laughs> and now she's got the diabetes. Yep, she got the Walter mm. I spoiled her too. So. <laughs> That's Walter Brimley. That's like Brad <laughs> calls Pig our $5,000 cat because he kept getting in cat fights with the stray cat. Exactly. And we spent like five grand on this cat. You oh, get it. Dog. You get it. Designer dog, designer cat. That's it. <laughs> yep. All right, no. Grammy's Thrift says, when using lists similar, my eBay login shows the live listing instead of my store name with a photo. I'm not sure what she's asking. Okay, when using lists similar, my eBay login shows in the live listing instead of my store name. Okay, my eBay login shows in the live listing. Rod? I don't know. I, I don't understand the question. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is that is a Hi, Carrie. <laughs> Carrie gave us super chat. <laughs> um, yeah. Grammy, if you're That's in the what? chat, if you could clarify for us, I'm not sure what. She's saying like her username pops up instead of her. It pops up under her username. Under like oh, that yeah. instead. I don't know. All right, here's Kevin again. Grammy, if you're in there, 
if you could maybe clarify a little bit for us, I'm, or maybe in the chat, if you know, let us know. Here comes Kevin again. Oh. Uh, that probably made Carrie's night. Never gets old. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Hi, Dawn, so. if you're there. <laughs> <clears throat> all right let's see i'm gonna leave that one there i just put i wanted to put this up for mojo trashy panda said not a question but her daughter found a vintage 80s prom dress that she's wearing to her prom on friday which is cool we love that we got kids coming here from the high schools and stuff grabbing their clothes and we love that for like the proms and some of the chicks just got some for home yeah her prom yeah. dress here too we love that yeah yeah you guys, awesome. sell, like, you guys sell vintage dresses and stuff like that there Whitley's got a whole section. Yeah, she's got a whole section. That's cool. No clothes. Yeah, that's awesome. Norma Jean wants to know, should a very new eBay seller use the promoted listings or wait until the store has 200 items? Um, If you're new to eBay, um, I would probably just say simplify, get your listings up. Don't worry about promoted listings. Um, it also depends on if you're trying to be a full-time or if you're doing a part-time. There's a lot of questions to ask there but i mean if you're just a fairly new ebay seller oh well, i guess it says right there should a very new ebay seller sorry uh gotta read in between the lines there um i wouldn't worry about the promoter listings too much just get your listings up get comfortable with ebay learn how the shipping goes learn how the listing goes um and then once you kind of get your listings up there a little bit kind of see what your profit margins are how quick things are moving um in this business it's all about um you know uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Experiment, experimenting the way things do uh, on, on your on your eBay store. So just kind of play with that. And then if you're like, okay, well, I'm averaging, let's say, $1,000 a week, and you've been doing it for, let's say, six months, then, you know, start start doing it from here and there and see if it makes a difference in your sales and in your, um, uh, how much you're selling every 90 days. So that that's what I would do personally. <clears throat> Yeah, if you're if you're a new reseller, I wouldn't worry at all about doing the promoted stuff. I worry about having cool inventory that people are going to want, good quality pictures, competitive pricing, and consistency. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with them. I mean, the biggest thing is you want to just get your bearings under you and figure out what, kind of what you're doing. I mean, but I mean, it's it's simple. I mean, you can just do two percent too if you wanted to across the board and everything just to start off with. Um, but I mean, since you you are new to eBay. You might want to not promote maybe the first month and then you can always add it later on just to kind of see what stuff's selling for you or what kind of where your market is and, and what's moving, what's not moving. But I mean, I promote all my stuff at, at least 2% or more. Um, I know Kat promotes all of her stuff, but it just, it's going to be different strokes for different folks when it comes down to it. Yeah, I would say that's up to you. Um, if you're buying low, I would, um, because the competition is pretty fierce on eBay. But if you're doing really rare items, you don't necessarily have to. We um, we typically, even my one-off items I promote because I'm OCD and I don't want to see anything saying I need to promote it. So I just promote everything. But um and it also, like, your item will show under similar items if you're promoting. So even if yours is rare, if they search for something similar and you're promoted, yours is going to come up too. So I think you could get sales like that. Um, and I know you can promote even if you don't have a store. So I would say if you're buying low, I would promote. Um, and you have to be careful because some people have to pay more depending on where they live. And you don't have room to promote, you know, and still make a good profit. Me, I, I told you earlier, I'm cheap. And I want, you know, I have room to promote. Um, yeah, Rod. So Grammy came in, uh, Rod and I both saw it. So what Grammy was saying is that the listing shows Navy mom instead of Grammy. So your username is always what shows on the listing. But so you would need to change your username to Grammy's thrifts and quilted gifts. And I think that's probably too long for a username. Like my store and my username are both the nurse slipper on eBay. Um, they're the same, but it all, everybody's, it doesn't ever show your store name. It only shows your username. So I hope that helps. Um, but you can change your, you can change your username. Yeah, I think that's what, what I think she did. Maybe change her username. That was that's what my thought process was on it. Because if she changed her username, 
But if you change it, it should show the new one. She, so you name your store and that's your store name, but that doesn't come up as your username still. You still have your username. I feel like it should be. I think she's right. Well, I feel like it should be yours. So that's what I was thinking. I was thinking that she's But that's how they have it. So Yeah, she may have already yeah. had it set and maybe changed it. And then the store name is still different than what her, her username was. So or it could be vice versa. So. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's the same it thing, but yeah, but you should be able to change it. It might you might not be able to change it that long, but you could do like Grammy's thrifts or something like that. Um, did we do that one? We, yeah, we just did yeah, that we one. did that one. Did we just both undo the? I hope we didn't undo a question. No, uh, Squirrely know. reseller said, if you have many items, a, a death pile of vintage clothing or a pair of shoes, that there is only one listed for sale, no sell through. How do you price it to move it quickly? So one for sale, none sold. How are you going to price? Yeah. So um. Depending on what exactly what it is, the, depending on the brand, like if it's something that just on a lower end, let's say for for example, some somebody has it up there for like ten dollars plus shipping, it's probably not worth uh, much money. Now, if they have something on there, let's say three hundred dollars plus shipping, uh, no sell through rate. I actually use a website called Worth Point. Uh, it's always a good reference um, for anything. I mean, I found so many things in storage units that I have used that. 10 times over and it is literally paid for my subscription. I was um, wondering if it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you, if you're getting volume, absolutely. It's worth it. If you're a new reseller, it's probably not. Um, but yes, absolutely is. It has saved my butt on many of many of items where I'm like, well, this little vintage thing is not, can't be worth much. It's plastics from the seventies. I don't know. It looks like crap, whatever. But when I look it up, it's worth like 50 bucks. And I'm like, holy crap. I'll list it. And it'll sell like a month later. So, um, you know, just depending on the brand, you know, but you never know. Uh, let's just say, one thing that I always like to do too, if I cannot find a single soul comp on eBay, and keep in mind you can go to Terapy and look at things for what a, three years now. I think they changed it, um, yeah. so you can you can use that as reference if you don't have a Worth Point account. Um, Worth Point, I believe, is twenty nine ninety nine or twenty six ninety nine. Yeah, twenty six a month. Yeah, something like that. And um, so you don't necessarily need it, but it's definitely helpful um, as you grow your store. Um, but if you have no sold comps on eBay, can't find any, nothing on Worth Point. The worst thing that you can do is put it up there. As long as, like I said, as long as you're, you have it, you you, um, you can store it for however long you want. So, you know, it might be one of those one-off things that might take three years to sell. But uh, one thing that I always say, though, there's always a buyer for everything. Um, that's one thing I learned in the business uh, for doing it four years. And I've sold many of things that I did not see anything on eBay, nothing on Worth Point. I put it out there for like a reasonable price, you know, like 50 bucks, 60 bucks, whatever the case is. And it will tend to sell over time. But I will say the one off stuff, I do tend to promote it um, just because I want my eyes on that specific mm -hmm. item. OK, I'm looking at the, you know, how do you price it to move quickly? Well, if I'm trying to move a big pile of clothing quickly, I'm not. It's a pair I, of shoes. I'm more of what it says pile of vintage clothing items, um, pairs of shoes. Yeah, and there's uh, no comp for it. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm selling them in to to a bulk guy who needs them. I'm finding the guy who needs them locally. I'm probably not going to throw it up on eBay if I did. Still, you, the way you phrased it, how to move it quickly, I'm going just low uh, fire sale price, you know, and getting it out of there. If you're trying to move it quickly, Especially you got to price pile. it a quick price, you know, a, a dub price where people are going to be like, I'm going to buy it. It's going to be gone. So for me, I mean, I, I have worth point. And the answer to your question of is worth it. It's not worth points, not for everybody. So if you're just selling like modern clothing, it's not going to be worth for you to pay for, for uh, worth point. But if you're getting a lot of old antique, a lot of vintage items, it may be worth it for you because, you know, what someone may just throw in, like, for example, they don't know a comp, they throw up an item that's, you know, on eBay for 50 bucks. Well, that item may have sold three years ago for 500 bucks. But there's no comp stores where people don't know. So that's why I always like to use Worth Point for one off items and stuff like that. But it's not for everybody. Um, for me, if I can't find it on Worth Point, I can't find any comps in the last 90 days. What I'm going to do is I'm going to list the, list the item up on eBay high and put it buy it now or with the best offer. That way I'll let the market dictate the price. You know, and then, you know, after if I don't get any watchers, any, any traction on it, then I'm just going to start lowering the price. So that way I can quickly move it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, I'm probably going to go to Worth Point too. I get enough one-off items. I use Worth Point all the time. It saves my butt a lot. Like people will, like people that don't use Worth Point, I see there's, they sell stuff for like $400 less than they could have got. 
And yeah. I go and look, and they're the only ones sold. I look on WorthPoint, and that same item they sold for 200 has been selling for 600 for years. And they just lost themselves 400 bucks. So I'm not going to go price mine at 200 because they did. But like Rod said, it's not for everybody. If you're not finding a lot of one-off or rare items, you're not going to use it. But I get enough and I source online. I use Hybrid to look up those items and see the trend. Like if they're going up, if they're going down. I have an item on auction right now starting at $600. Buy it now 15 Recently, they've only been selling for about 600 to 650. I started it at six, but over the last two years, multiple have sold for 2000. So I'm like, I'm going to auction it. And the only other two listed, both have been broken, have repairs, and mine does not. So I'm coming in at the lowest I saw them selling, and I'm hoping I had like 13 watchers last I looked. Um, it ends this Sunday. So Hopefully, if I get one bid, though, I'm happy. I sourced it on high bid for 150 bucks. If I get 600, I'm I'm happy in a week, you know. Um, so for me, if I can't find anything, I'm probably gonna undercut them by a little bit, like five bucks, ten bucks, so that I'm the lowest one. He's singing back there. He's got his headphones on. I don't know if you guys can hear him. Um, Hag sent a 999 super chat and said, any advice on cleaning vintage Letterman jackets? 50s era, chain stitch, no leather, just satin and cotton. Says meteors on the back with a little meteor. It's so, so cool. I'm scared to wash it. I don't have too much experience with vintage Letterman jackets. I'm assuming they're, oh, well, they're going to know. Um, if I had to guess, maybe dry clean, but I'm not a professional, so I'm going to let y'all take that over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, clearly, yeah, dry clean would be a great option. They're going to be professional cleaners with it. Or, I mean, if there's specific spots on it, I mean, obviously, a hand wash yourself, not, you know, scrubbing it, you know, crazily, but, you know, hand wash on, you know, yeah. spot treating some certain spots. Like the sink, almost like they would do in the 50s. Do the yeah, washboard. I mean, do the whole, just do the whole bit. And that way you can have a cleaner yeah, like they did Yeah, get the specific it. cleaners for it. Get Kinda satin cleaner, I mean, you know, if there's something that's a, you know, dark spot, maybe try, you know, on, on cotton at least, maybe use oxy or something like that on with the hand, very small amounts, test, and then do a small section and keep going. To make sure you're not like, you know, ruin it in your opinion. Is that what is that what you guys clean most of your vintage clothing? We do all of, anything that's like the white stuff. stuff that's like super yellowed or have has you know a lot of stains. You have a big oxy soak for a few hours and then a, a hang dry. Now, do you guys do like a do you guys throw it in your bathtub with like or buckets with just something like? T t oh yeah, we've done make, both. Yeah, dude, we do it in the shop here. She's got a big sink too. Yeah. No, we've done tub and buckets. Gotcha. I'll pass this on you, Kat, because I think they answered it good enough for me. <laughs> He's singing, tell me where the freak's at. Like, uh, Mike, yeah, listen. Yeah. <laughs> fine. He, he was jamming out on the front porch, and I mean jamming to Cotton Eye Joe earlier. And then Brad said he was jamming out to Van Halen when he drove up. This kid has, like, the most buried, but now, he, now he's dancing in addition to singing. Uh, let me give you a super chat that is not Kevin by, by request. I'll give you. We'll give you a classic one <laughs> here. Let's see. Where is Gino? Here it is. Here you go. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, me and Broad both clicked on the same thing. I'm like shaking my head at him. Gina sent a dollar ninety nine super chat. Well, here we'll do the original one too. Here's some different ones for you guys. Super chat. That was the original one from four years ago. I have a long list of them now. The super chat because people keep making them for me. Gino made me a whole bunch, and then Yvonne made me a couple. So I have like a long list of super chats. Let's see. Norma Jean said, if you use promoted listings, what percent do you recommend? This is going to be varied and it's definitely opinion and based on your business. I'm going to say that before we start answering. Yeah, I was just about to say, that. I think everybody's different. I've seen like recommendations, like the recommendation that they put in the listings, like 13%, 15%. And 
and all this other stuff. Personally, what I do, um, I used to do the 2%, uh, you know, bare minimum, um, because I think a little bit of promotion does help uh, to some extent. Um, But I've recently, over the past probably like a year, year and a half or so, I bumped it up to about 5%. That's kind of what I've been sticking to. Sales have been pretty, pretty good, steady um usually right around that 800 items every 90 days uh so i haven't messed with that for almost going on two years now so i say five percent but like kat said you know everybody's different i've seen some people promote all the way up to 10 percent if they have bare minimal money into it i've seen people who have like one-off stuff to where they'll promote all the way up to like 25 percent uh and i've even seen the highest 50 percent, just depending on the 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 person you are 50 percent yeah yeah but, it, but they also had to, yeah, they also had the listing up there for like ten grand or something oh, like that. Yeah, so it was like, well, yeah, it, it was it's kind of a reach price, but yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, everything with that with us man, is just be trial and error. If you you gotta kind of see you know what we have versus what we have, you know have listed, what we have in it, you know, all trial trial and error, and just everything's kind of maybe different for each item. It could all depend. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, true. Yeah, I think you're right. You no, know, it's trial and error. I mean, you're gonna have to try different things. I mean, it really comes down to your buy cost. You, you make your money in the buy, not the sell, as I always say. And, you know, by doing that, you have the flexibility to to control what you want to promote it. You could promote it at 2%. You could promote it at 12%. You know, I run my all my listings usually between 2 and 3%, but I, I price accordingly with the market. You know, Kat likes to price higher than the market. And, you know, where she runs deals, she runs sales on hers. Where m- mine, I try to price, a, you know, market value or maybe a little below market value with best offer on. So, you know, it's going to just vary based on your business model. Both are right. You know, nothing's wrong. Everyone in this panel can do something differently and we're all going to get great sales on it. But you just got to, you know, try different things out and see what works best for you. But there is a rule of a law of diminishing returns. You know, you can only promote so high before that, you know, it's not going to really pay off. You're just giving eBay more money. So you got to find that sweet middle spot. What works best for your business? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I do trending, but I cap at 10%. Um, I used to cap at 14. I went down to 12 and now I've dropped it to 10. I probably won't drop it lower than 10. I will tell you when I was doing a ton of jewelry, I promoted at 20% because jewelry is one category on eBay that is super saturated with overseas sellers. So like your stuff kind of gets lost unless somebody puts like search USA sellers only. Um, so jewelry, and I used to buy it in lots where I'm like a buck or two in, unless it's, you know, sterling or something like that. Um, so jewelry, I used to promote really high. I think it really depends. Like I know like, um, Retro Rose is saying she follows J ride. Like each of us have our own business model. So you got to find what works for you. I would say do not go from 10% to zero or you will see a slowdown. You are not going to like at all. Um, eBay does not like that big drop. So that's why I went from 14 to 12 to 10. I I didn't drop from 14 to 10 because I dropped once from 10 to five and my sales went like non-existent. It was, it was not fun. I think you you made a good point. As I say, you made a good point though. It comes down to the category you're listing in too, because that plays a big factor. Yeah. Like jewelry, clothing, these are very competitive. Video games are very competitive things where if I'm selling antique desk or something like that, I'm probably not going to have a lot of competition on there. So I could promote lower than I would if I'm selling, you know, Jordan shoes where that you're going to promote higher because there's a lot more competition. Rana sent a forty nine ninety nine super chat, which is absolutely amazing. Wow. She wow. didn't, she didn't yes. say what she wants. I don't know. So, give her the, the word. Dealer choice. <laughs> I know, Dealer's Rana. Choice. If you want one, tell me and I'll play it. But for now, I'm going to play the whale. This is like, I think this is my favorite of the newest ones. Here. And then, Mark is late, as usual. Look, we have more puppies. It's a puppy show. We had a cat show a few weeks ago where everybody had a cat, and now we have a puppy show. Oh, it's, it's my, my buddy, it's my buddy Max. Oh, you have a Chi Chi too. Yeah, I got, he I got has another. a Chi Chi too. Yeah, I, was, oh, I got somewhere. a Chihuahua. Um, she's she's downstairs. That's yeah, so sweet. My buddy, uh, 
he uh essentially saved my life in the military. He ever since I've been with him, he's, he he has like real bad separation anxiety. He always got. You be can tell dad. he loves you. Mm -hmm. he, yeah, he actually at a at a young age, I think he's probably like two years old, something like that. And uh, I don't know if y'all can see it too well, but this eye right. His eyes, here. yeah. Yeah, my parents' bigger Doberman actually bit him out of jealousy, mm. and uh, it's kind of the similar story of what uh, Cat was talking about. The cat, whether you get you to get sewn in uh, the, oh, wow. the eye socket, um, they said that eventually he will get glaucoma or something like that. But mm. he's he's a champ. He hasn't had any issues with it, not scratching it. So, but other than that, though, he has real bad anxiety. But when he's with his daddy, he's good. Yeah, most <laughs> he's of the little cute. dogs do. Most of the little dogs do. We know. Yeah. That. We got but he, yeah, I, I, I tell you right now, he's, yeah, like he's he's definitely a protective Look family. You hear it. something at three or four o'clock in the morning, and somebody scared half the crap out of us. So I grab, oh yeah, you know, so I go investigate, and he's just staring at a shadow because he can't see because his eye or something. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and funny story about him. So you know, whenever like a computer screen or a TV screen, how it'll dim down and have like the logo and it'll bounce around the yeah, screen. Yeah, bounce around. Three o'clock in the morning, we randomly see him on top of the couch, staring at the TV, barking at that little logo, going back. And oh forth. yeah, <laughs> he can't stand yeah. it. He wants it to yeah. hit the corner. That's all. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, he's he's a trip though. Any any God, piece of plastic, him. yeah, any piece of plastic that that goes in our yard, he immediately darts to it. He has to pee on it. Like he's <laughs> very weird dog. <laughs> Very, very Big weird. Guy. Big, the, strong yeah, guy. they're always weird. Yeah. That's what makes them awesome. They're so uh -huh. weird. Our boys, it's like a train. Like, one will go, and then the other has to go, and then the girl yeah. will go. Like, everybody has to uh, <laughs> mark yeah, he, everything. Matter of fact, whenever he was a baby, I used to do this to him all the time, so now he just sits there. Oh, it, it, yes, it that's how I hold her, too. I'll have her, like, up and yeah. face up real high. Yep. Uh -huh. he loves He's like, it. okay, whatever. He yeah, loves it. He's comfy, right boy. like that. He's <laughs> yep. chilling. He'll stay there. He'll, he'll, he won't move. No, he loves it. That's, That's awesome. the only place he wants to be. That's cute. Mm -hmm. All right, Mark gets rod because that's what Mark always gets. Here you go. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Until next time. We got another one. Nice. Grammys. Jeez. Jeez. Oh. I know. Boom, boom, boom. We'll go to the beach now. Here we go. That was at Tybee Island, too. We like, we like going to Tybee. I think we might go. I just won some stuff um, off of High Bid, and I am going to go down by Rod and pick it up. So me and Dalton might go find more sand dollars in clear water if the tide is right tomorrow. I the pick up tomorrow, really Thursday clear. or Friday. Fun fact. I just made water. some resin stuff with our sand dollars too. Yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 actually, I'm actually afraid of the water. What? Yeah, I uh the last so is he. he hates water. I really so, no, I'm like a funny. fish. That's why there's all this water stuff. I'm probably giving him anxiety with all my water stuff. I love the <laughs> I love the water. Like yeah. both, both these men hate water. It's it's not it's not a weird thing. I'm right there with you, brother. I, I so the last three times I went to the beach. I was younger, probably, I don't know, 15, 16. I got stung by a whole wave of jellyfish. Oh. You know, I'm, I'm like, you know what? I'm a man. I'm still going to, I'm not going to be afraid. I went out there again and I was actually looking for sand dollars at the bottom of the ocean. And I picked up this thing. I'm like, oh, this is a big old shell. I can't wait to pick this thing. I'll pull that thing out of the water. It's a big old giant crab and it pinched my thumb. And then uh, my third time, whenever I was in the military, we actually went to a, a beach that was on a base and it was infested with crabs. And no joke, I put my towel down and I laid on my stomach and I interlocked my ankles so they weren't touching the ground because I was afraid a crab was gonna bite my toes. My, my wife calls me a baby, but uh, I, I, I don't I don't do the ocean. I can't see my feet. Now if it's clear, you know, you give me a spear gun or or something like that. Hey, I'm good. Or a knife or something. I'm like, I'm if good. You have I have to, to like get in there. You will. Right. That's him. Like if I absolutely yeah, have to, yeah. Yo, if it's murky, I'm out. <laughs> Right, exactly. So that's the thing. I love the beach, but I don't go in the water if I can't see either. So, like, if it's not clear, I don't go in the oh, water. I don't like, care. I'll get in it. When no, I like to. I I need to see what I need to see what's going on. I'm not scared of it, but I just don't want to. So, like, when we go to the keys, that's crystal clear. When we go scalloping, that's crystal clear. You know, like 
I I like to see, I know what's in there because I've seen it and I've swam with it. I know what's there. I want to be able to 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 see it when it sees though. me, you know? <laughs> we don't have alligators here. I could swim in a lake and it won't matter. There's a video, there's a video on TikTok where um it's somebody in Florida actually, and he's like, This is why you need to have polarized glasses. And he walked by like a, a canal of water, and you don't see anything, it's all murky. And he puts the, the shades on, and immediately there's a huge alligator just sitting right there in the middle. I'm like, Now I know what super chat I have to give next I for the know. one that's sitting there. Polarized glasses? <laughs> now I know. Yeah. It's that's cool. He changed cool. the whole color of the of the canal. And you oh, yeah. It. Like, we yeah. have to have, when we're fishing, we have to have polarized. So mm -hmm. if you guys haven't seen it now, speaking of swimming with alligators, um, Retro Rose sent $5 and said this chat helped me get serious. And mostly full-time two years ago. Thanks so much, a seller since 2001. You're very, very welcome. I am very happy to hear that. I am going to give you my swimming with alligator super chat. Here you go. <laughs> Nope. That was another Yvonne creation. Nope. That gator was in there immediately when I got out. I did not okay, see him while I was right in there. Next to you. There's no flipping no. way. Nope. Well, he was only like four feet too, but I'm, I mean, I would have got out of the water if I saw him, but he, I, I'm sure he was there when I was swimming, but I didn't see him. I like um, how she says only four feet. I'm five nine. That's basically yeah, as big as me. Four really feet's a baby yeah. gator. I'm like, I wouldn't bat an eye That's at a baby to gator. That's big to me. <laughs> no, they have to be like eight foot for me to be impressed with them. Um, but I mean, I grew up in Florida. My mom has them climb her fence trying to get her dogs. Like, I mean, it, you know, so that's at the springs though, right by me. And that is crystal clear to the 30 foot bottom. You can see everything in there. Um, beautiful, beautiful water. I went swimming in like 60 degree weather after I worked out cause I was hot. So it was very nice to go take a dip. All right, let's see. Molly's asking me, now that I'm measuring clothes, have I found they're selling better? So I've been measuring them for a little over a year, um, consistently measuring for about six months. And no, I have not seen a difference in how they are selling. And yes, people still say it's the wrong size, even though I provide every measurement and they still return it. Um, we, I did start buying sweaters that are handmade really nice and not sized. So I'm interested to see how that goes because they're like vintage hand knit in Norway um, and really, really expensive sweaters. So I looked at armpit to armpit of like other clothing items to try and guess like an approximate size and told them to see measurements. Um, I would actually be interested, like Mojo, what do you guys do without a size? Do you estimate a size for stuff like that? No, I just always measure pit to pit and then top to bottom. So you just put the measurements. You don't put yep. like like any size. Uh, well, I mean, tip. Well, yeah, typically if it doesn't have a tag. Or if it doesn't have a tag, usually like a, a, a seventeen to eighteen pit to pit is going to be a small. Like a nineteen to twenty is going to be a medium. A twenty one to twenty two really a large. Twenty three. I'm mean, sorry, twenty four is an extra large, and so forth. Twenty five double X. Yeah, that's about where I was figuring. So I was, yeah. yeah and I, from looking at the measurements, kind of did. So because in the search, I want to have some size, you know, so that like people looking for that approximate size would find it. Um, yeah. But and we just started using the Sizely app too, which is beautiful. I absolutely love it, which takes your measurements for you. Wow. With the iPhone. Cool. Technology. It's accurate too. It is accurate. It's crazy. It works very well. Yeah, you just like do this or something to it. Yeah, right? yeah you scan it. Yep. yep and it'll it tell just... you if it wants you to go like up or down. And it gives like it gives way more measurements than we were giving. You know, it gives like and you can add any measurement you want and it's free. So we we just started using that last week and it's like such a time saver. It's beautiful for clothes. Um, now a question for Rod. <laughs> what did you find out about the Metallica Yankees shirt? So for those that don't know, my uh, flipping and punching video, my um, Papa Punching use of a hauling business in, uh, in Pennsylvania brought me down a ton of, every time he comes down to visit me, brings out me a bunch of merchandise. 
And he brought me down and opened up this box and it had this Metallica sweatshirt where it had like the Metallica logo with a Yankees logo on it. But it, I can't find the that specific logo. I can't find anywhere. I reached out to some other resellers I know. They, you know, no one else can can see that. So either they they sold it in the park lot. That's my original thought, or that it might have been the Metallica uh, fan club that was sold through. So I don't know. Um, I'm getting sizes. It's getting my mother in law has it right now, taking photos, and she's gonna give me the measurements. I'm gonna have it listed here in a little bit. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't know anything. I couldn't find it. I found a bunch of similar items with like the Metallica jerseys when they played in Yankee Stadium back in 2011, but. That's the only thing I found. It's probably the year. It's probably 2011. No, no. Do any of us have any opinions about Flip? Uh, I actually used to use it. Um, it actually works pretty great uh, for the most part. Um, as recently, I, I simplified my business. I don't really do a lot of cross-listing anymore because of a couple of hiccups and um, certain things weren't ending on uh, certain uh different platforms. Um, but whenever I was first using it, it's actually a great app uh, for, for beginners for sure. And then I think I did go over to uh, list perfectly and then I tried to try to, you know, a handful of other ones. Um, but, but for it's still free. Cause if it's still free, it's not bad for a, for, um, I just started charging nine bucks. Just started, just started charging. Okay. Yeah. So whenever I was doing it, uh, they did a little program where you can uh, get invited to do it. And as I was doing it and I could do it for free. So um, cross listing app, Flip was it was pretty pretty good for me, but I definitely think I would choose List Perfectly or Bindu over over Flip. Uh, we haven't used it, so toss it up to Rod. So I use it for the sharing aspect for my Poshmark because they would allow you to have a free um, allow you to share your store for free. Now they charge, you know, to to use the, the app. So I I've crossed this through this perfectly, and I have only used flip for that so it worked good um to cross i mean to uh share my store for me but once they start charging i just i just stopped it wasn't worth it for me at that point in time and i didn't try it they they actually contacted me recently um to, uh, trying to get me to advertise with them which i will turn down because i have been affiliated with list perfectly for over two almost three years now i think quite a long time and i love the ladies at lp and I just love their story. Like, I think their stories and same with my reseller genie, like when the resellers, like, I wish I had an idea, like one of these, you know, where you have like this program and then you're not selling stuff and you're making money. Um, so I, like, I applaud all the people that do that. I wish I could come up with that. Um, so I, yeah, I haven't used it. What they told me in my contact email was that it was free for 90 days for people. That's what they said in the contact letter that they sent me. And then I guess they start charging after 90 days is what, and I just got that the past couple of days. Um, Wendy wants to know, does the order of keywords in your title really matter? Um, personally, I don't think so. Um, other than maybe put like new, new with tags, um, at the beginning or at the end of the title. Um, lately I've been going towards the end of the title. Um, because I think the first, I would say the first like four or five keywords are important. Um, you know, vintage, maybe a year, um, or, uh, you know, the particular like brand, like if it's, uh, you know, vintage Hanes, is it, is it, uh, Looney Tunes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, First five, I would say so, but after that, I think once you kind of get the gist of what it is, and you, then then you can start adding a little bit more keywords. I would say use all eighty characters that eBay gives you, um, just because it'll definitely maximize your uh, your search um, when people go to search certain things. So uh, definitely first five, do it correctly, and then after that, um, kind of put those extra keywords in there, like you know, clean, vintage, et cetera, new sealed, new in box, new in package. Totally agree. Again, uh, just any kind of pertinent information first, like, you know, obviously the vintage stuff, if it's a tooled leather belt, you want to have that stuff first. Then as you go, you know, size, yada, yada, continue on. So definitely, definitely just have that pertinent stuff first and just go from there. So I think it, the order does matter. And the part of the reason why I say this is because, eBay, when you do search something, depending on how you search it, they will give you suggested search that, that may have more results. So if you, you know, you, if you misspell a word or if you maybe you aren't sure about a word, they'll put more in there. So does the order does 
I think impact your search. So you you like both of them said you want to put make sure you have the keywords in front. You know the you know how someone would normally search for something at the very end. Like any additional filler you want to put in there, I'm I'm okay with that. I I do try to maximize my characters in my listings because you know any keywords are going to populate. But you want to try to put them in an order that you would think how a normal person would search because that's why eBay does give you the suggested search on there and what you do do a search. Yep. Yeah, and I've heard recently the first three to five words are what is most important. So I would put that important stuff at the beginning. I normally put new and vintage at the end or in the middle somewhere because I'm I'm putting new in my item specifics and vintage. So I figure it's going to pick it up regardless of where it's at. I, yeah, I, me too. And then I have to decide which word I want to cut out. Yeah. Or I'll put the and symbol instead of and, or I'll put W with a slash for with. Like, Perhaps. I can figure out. Uh, Squirrely reseller sent a nine ninety nine super chat and said, thank you, Brandon, for your service and for your kindness and time last week. Thank you, Cat Rod and Mojo Dojo and Brandon for being here tonight and love the chilling puppies and <laughs> agree with Rod on the pineapple. Does that mean she wants Kevin? Uh, <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that's exactly what that means. I think we all. <laughs> okay, it's been a little while, so here's yeah. Kevin. I'm not gonna lie, Kevin never looked so good before. Let me tell you. I know. I mean, right? that, that I mean he didn't have really. I mean, when you start at the bottom, you're working your way up. I mean, it's all up from there, so. Then eating is waiting. <laughs> Miss Jonell said, do any of us ever have a death pile yard sale? Uh, absolutely, because we do a lot of storage units throughout the year. And it, being essentially me and my wife, you know, we, we do the reselling thing, but I pretty much do all the logistics stuff. So as a pretty much a one man army person, uh listing everything cleaning i mean y'all everybody knows the logistics of, of how online reselling goes uh we absolutely do like some of the bigger stuff stuff that just doesn't really sell as well on ebay um stuff that's been sitting for a while we i mean with, if we do a, a a decent amount of storage in throughout the year i think we probably have maybe up to 10 yard sales a year um sometimes more sometimes less just depending on what we're getting into but absolutely there's no point of um having items that or just kind of sitting around if you're not listing them, you know, it's might as well. Sometimes it's better to declutter, get like a mental reset. Um, I've done that a couple of times uh, because whenever we do storages, I bring a whole bunch of stuff in here and I have kind of like a low key ADHD. So I'll be going through this tote, going through that tote, doing the research on this stuff. So it will definitely get overwhelming, but I would, I, I definitely say, I think just about everybody has had a death pile yard. So that's, that's built into our business model with the way we buy yep. similar to him with the storage units, we buy, Kind of all or nothing, even like Rob was saying with deals, we take it all. We'll take so all we, the crap too. We have two separate buildings. We have kind of <laughs> here, where it's like the more kind of uh, more curated stuff and cool stuff. And then we have a whole other separate building that's just like overflow that we just have. Of crap. We just have fire sales down there in the summer. It's crap. The garage crap, sale. You know. the doors are just bad people come and grab it all, man. First day, we do like a three day garage sale. We'll start the first day regular price, the second day. Maybe fifty percent off. Last day's a dollar. Get it out of here. Dollar days. So dollar at, days. We do that. It's part of our business plan. That's awesome. Yeah, I actually just did one two weeks ago. So I'm actually going to be putting out that video on my flipping and punching channel here, probably the next week or so. But me and the wife, we decided to have a. We, well, my community was doing a community yard sale, and we ended up doing one. It was great, though. I mean, it was nice being on the other side of of going out picking because I go. My Saturday is designed for yard sales, so it was nice being at home and being on the other side of it, negotiating with people, having people trying to work deals with me. So it's, you know, but we did like 1200 bucks. So, I mean, it was a nice, nice day hung out there and we cleared a bunch of crap. I will tell you though, there's a lot of things you need to know when you do every yard sale, make sure you have an exit plan at the very end, what you're going to do with all what's, what's left over. Cause either you don't want to put all that stuff back into what you were just previously doing. You know, you want to make sure you can move stuff, but it's, it was a lot of fun. I do not. Um, and that's because I just, I don't have the time to put it together. I was sitting stuff aside for one at one point and I have somebody that sells at the flea market and 
she will take all of the crap. So she takes everything I give her and I make sure I give her, I don't give her all crap. You know, she gets some good stuff too. Um, like we have stuff that with flaws, I don't feel like is worth listing, but it would sell well for them at the flea market. So that stuff I set aside for her. Um, and I just give it to her all free because basically I can text her and she's there either that day or the next and she takes it all away for me. So that is how I deal with it. And the nice thing is I actually went to the flea market and she had stuff I wanted to buy and she gave me an amazing deal on it because I give her all of this stuff all the time. Um, and she she's actually who gave two of our rescue kitty cats a home this past weekend um too and she's been like picking me up plants from the flea market too which is absolutely wonderful Aww. so marcia says her rule doing a garage sale is if it went out it does not come back in it gets donated so that's what i that's how i met her actually i had a yard sale and i didn't want the stuff to come back in and i posted on facebook marketplace for somebody but they had to come get it all it was all or nothing, no digging through it. And then after that, I kept her, um, I kept her contact info and now I just text her and she yeah. just comes in, which is beautiful. That's gnarly. That's perfect. I love it. Gino wants to know, Rod, have you been back to drunk in the trunk? Yeah, it was back once. Um, I want to go back more though. It's a lot of fun. If you guys don't know, Junk in the Trunk in the state of Florida is it's a once a month. It's a boot sale. The people that own it are actually from the UK. Okay. And what oh, a boot sale is, cool they actually, is. Yeah, you pull your car up and then you that's actually sell stuff on the back of your, your car. You set a table. So what they call a boot sale. But that's how it's set up. It's only once a month. So it's like it's like a pop-up flea market. And uh, it's really good. So. It's an adult trunk or treat. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. I want to go back, but it like Dalton has his swim practice on Saturdays and normally it's Saturdays. So like we would get there too late, unfortunately, I guess I could make Brad take him one day. I, does anybody know the answer to this is Sizely part of, I don't list on list perfectly. I list on eBay and then I copy it over to list perfectly. Does anybody know? No idea. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Don't know. I, I think, I feel like it is. Is anybody, does anybody in the chat know? Yeah, we do need to do another meetup there. Last time it was me, Rod, Marsha, Gino's fine, Sandy, my flipping van life. Dave was there, NC Picker. There were a lot of us. Steve, Papa Punchin. Oh yeah, your dad was there. Yeah. My husband actually came. Dalton was there. We had fun. According right. to Google, perfectly list perfectly integrates Sizely into the ad product page for for pro customers. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, so it does integrate. Beautiful. See, this is why we keep burning around. <laughs> Sizely is free. Sizely is free. Um, Marsha wants to know what's the highest price you've sold something for. The highest thing I've ever sold was for $2,500. It was from a storage unit that we paid $450 for. Um, it was filled with aviation equipment. I mean, pretty crazy stuff, like stair stuff, snap on. Um, and it basically, it was a, it's called a transducer kit. And it's by Neck Tech, N E C T E C, or something like that. A little small case, very, very small. Uh, can fit in a 10 by 8 by 6 box. Uh, and it sold for 2500 bucks. And neck tech. yeah, it's something in the aviation world. Uh, from that unit, it, when you do storages, you will learn all types of new brands that, that you will probably never see at a garage sale or a thrift store. Um, but that unit, I learned crazy amounts of uh, brands. And uh, but it was just a transducer kit, and uh, we actually sold the second one for like around $1,800. Um, those are probably my, my two most expensive items. Very cool. I'd say, uh, for us, if it, out, out of the clothing realm, before this, I was doing a lot of selling guitars, and a guitar I came across uh, that I made a lot off of was a old uh, 65 SG, Gibson SG, I sold for 7500 bucks. Ooh, nice. What's the most expensive vintage shirt you guys ever sold, or vintage piece of clothing? 3000 bucks for a T-shirt. Which T-shirt? It was a mosquito head. Uh, I'm not sure if you... Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but... A Warhol mosquito head. Andy Warhol. I bought it off yeah. some junkie over in like Middletown, a town away off the back. To me, he was wearing it. He kept wearing it. I was like, bro, that shirt's gonna have to come with me. So I threw him 100 bucks, flipped it. And this was during uh, like 2020, the big height of 
the, everything yeah. being at the surge of prices. So yeah, we 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 made out on that one. That was insane. Just that's happened. awesome. But it's not worth right that place, now. Right, but, right, hey, time. right yeah, place, right time. Right place, right time. Right place, right time. That was it. Yep. So I've talked about this before, but I had a, the original Castlevania game that was complete that was sealed for the NES. I got it professionally graded, came back as an 8.0, and I ended up flipping it to another. I uh, actually flipped it to an, someone who grades comic books at CGC for nine thousand dollars cash. Wow, uh, yeah. that's I paid, awesome! I paid three three hundred and seventy three hundred seventy. I can't remember. Is it three seventy five or three ninety? And I paid a hundred dollars to get it graded. So I had about five hundred dollars into it. I turned to nine thousand. Wow. Let's go. Yeah, so mine's tied. I had three, actually four things I've sold right at three thousand. Um, two were Judith Lieber Swarovski crystal purses, and then a Capa di Monte Disney statue for three thousand, and a really cool Romero Brito painting for three thousand. So I've had four at that three thousand dollar mark, and have not topped it yet. I wanted to put this up there because Jovial said how to buy her for an INAD for a vintage Kansas City Chiefs sweatshirt. They said the sleeve length was a half an inch difference. They wore the sweatshirt during the playoffs, returned it, smelled of put smoke and cologne. Uh, you can report them and you can you can automatically deduct 50% off yourself and you can ask eBay for the other 50%. And I wanted to put it up here so I would say that. Um, just so that you know, there must be some long arm dudes out there because she had a complaint about that too about sweatshirt. Like, my forearms are too long for this. Like, he's, how are we supposed to? Do that, it bro? Goes up too high. I'm like, I'm like, I sent you the so arm. How do, you, do you not know the size of your own arm, you did. sir? I can't help. I don't you. know the size of my arm. Right. But even if it didn't, you just push you it just up. Pull Big it deal, bro. Deal with this it. This is what it is. What do you do? This is my other half, you guys. Just so y'all know, this is my wife. Hi. Charlie. Hi. We, yeah, we met in the military, so she's been with me for about seven years now. Put, oh, putting up oh you guys are sweet. <laughs> you want so, to like come say hi. Same town. We were just talking about the most expensive stuff, so put in the chat, guys, down below. I'm interested. I see someone just said they sold a Barbie for $3,800. So what? everyone in the chat, let us know what is the most expensive item you guys have ever flipped. I have that. It'll be interesting to see what everyone, everyone else does. I have a my size Barbie. I love that thing. <laughs> I think this is opinion based, so we'll see what everybody on the panel's opinion is. If you find a plush with tags at a yard sale, do you put it as new or used? I just say with tags, typically. <laughs> oh my God. This mother, <laughs> baby. She, she follows my wife around. Oh, baby. It's, 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 it's Piper. It's Piper. Yeah, Brandon, Piper. do you put a, do you say it's new or do you say it's use if you find a, a plush with tags on at a garage sale if i'm plush with the tags at a yard so newer use um i would definitely inspect it um make sure there's no scuffs rips tears you know uh anything out of the ordinary um if it smells clean i uh and there's nothing like damage to the tag absolutely listed as new um or you can do new other um you could say like if it does have tags and um you might put like new other and in the description you might put like hey there's a small bend in the tag or something uh, uh it's very important to be as descriptive as possible when it, when you do list items uh because you have very very picky people out there but you also have very people uh, a lot of people out there who honestly don't care about a, a bend in a tag but there's a, some diehard collectors out there that if it's even a smidge damaged into the box they will ream you a new one i want a refund uh and stuff like that but um absolutely just Look it over one good time, and if you would buy it in the store, absolutely list it as new. It's gonna come down to a lot, dude. Like the price with me, if it's like very cheap, I mean, it's not really even gonna matter. I'll probably just put with tags again. If it's, oh, if it's super expensive, and you know, uh, after we've given it the one over and there's no kind of extenuating circumstances, it's like damn near perfect. Yeah, then we'll then we'll probably put new with tags. I put and so I'll, I'm just like everyone else. I'll examine it. If there's no rips or no stains on it, I'll put new with tags because it still has a brand new tag on it. Yep. Um, if it has damage to it, I'll put, I'll put new or I'll put all this is used on eBay with tags. I'll put you know plus with tags or something like that, and then I'll put it as used. And I'll just put in the description you know was new with tags, but it has a you know it has X Y Z damage to it, and then just sell it like that. It looks like that stuff. That yeah. Looks here. That's fluffy. Dalton, Dalton found my hand sanitizer on the desk. Um, 
I would put it as new as long as I didn't see a flaw. So like if there was a stain or something like very obvious, oh, then yeah. I would put it as used. But if it was clean, no issues, I'm I'm going to put it as new. I already got five. Wow. You're, you yeah, he's, he's already, you're almost six. Yeah. Some of these, cats, some he's of these, uh, res these results people are giving us are Spider-Man glasses for $600. Piece of folk art, you know. A pin was for two thousand dollars. That's wow. crazy. Yeah. Oh wow! A photo scanner, you know, like just. It, hey, you know what? You have to start somewhere. So even if you're new, that's awesome. Eighty-five bucks. Congrats. Yeah, I mean that's more. good. I'm ha I'm I'd be thrilled with a hundred and eighty-five dollar sale. Mm -hmm. Like for twenty-five hundred. This like bracelets. Like yeah. it's that's awesome, man. This is very encouraging to see everyone do this. For free. That's the best oh, price yeah. ever. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and a heart shaped ice cream that's scoop to make the name for seven thousand dollars to the what? dairy queen owner. That's crazy. I sold a heart shaped that, ice cream. That would start my reselling journey too if I did that, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, like it's just but it's cool. I think vintage sports flips had one in here. Sort of I missed it. I don't know where it's at, but city sort of uh a sports program from 1871. We love, him. We love yeah, Keith. we love yeah. Keith. Keith mm -hmm. is dude. He always finds killer sports stuff. Right? Here it is. Yeah. He was, really if you guys don't follow Keith, That's give crazy. guys Keith a follow. But he was just on. He was on. 71. Yeah, 1871 for Football 16k. Program. How is that wow. not disintegrated? For 16k. Good work, Keith. So crazy. crazy. Yeah, he was recently on the show here <laughs> with us, though. So. I'll sell you a bundle. Oh, okay. we could. Nope. We we clicked at the same time twice. Oh, yeah. So Ladon said she sent Dalton. Come here. She said she's sending it for you. So I'm gonna let Dalton pick which which one we give her. Which one do you want to do? <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> the one at the top. All right. Here you go. Was that okay? Good one. He he's like. Of course. All right. See them all. Dolphins always <laughs> in play. Two more questions. Squirrely reseller wants to know Mojo Dojo. What is the puppy's name? This is Luxie. That is the Queen Luxie, shop dog. She <laughs> lives. She lives to come to the shop. <laughs> And all of her <laughs> she's too, like, much like, too much like your uh, your animals has an eye problems. She's got what's known as a cherry um, eye. So, yeah. So, a cherry bunch eye. Of, bunch yeah. of, so if there's any <laughs> dog or cat optometrist in the chat, we need, hit any of us. Up. Any of us. We all need optometrists. Gotcha. Animal vet I know, right? All right, last question for tonight. Miss Susan said, how are people doing with Mercari sales in the past week since the changes? And I don't know who on the ch chat sells a Mercari, but, but before, answer in the chat too. Let her know if you're selling on Mercari, how your sales are going. All right, Brandon. Yeah, um, so I don't sell on Mercari anymore, but my two cents in it, uh, whenever I was cross-listing on the Mercari and, and, uh, and all that that I was doing last year, um, I didn't really see... A whole lot of sales from Macari. Um, I will say a lot more like hats uh, sold more than anything compared to eBay for at least for me. Um, some one-off stuff. Um, video games. Well, I guess video games for eBay actually sells pretty good for me. Um, but yeah, overall Macari sales were just not the greatest to me, and I had you know well over fifteen hundred listings over there. Um, so my Macari sales were definitely not the greatest. Um, you guys sell Macari? I did. I tried once, and I think I sold a couple things, but then I just stopped. Yeah, we have, so we don't really. Gotcha. No. So, <laughs> I just sold on. I just sold something to Macari today. So, I mean, Macari sales are, are. I haven't seen a big change at all with Macari sales, but I mean, one thing I'll probably just leave you guys off with is, people are complaining that you know they move the seller fees to the buyer. Look at the number one selling platform in the world. It's Amazon. Everything on Amazon is price higher than ebay and amazon still says sells 10 times more than what ebay does so if you guys think that buyers aren't going to come to macari to buy items you're 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 wrong if buyer wants an item they're going to pay for the item every single auction house has a buyer premium where buyers pay 10 to 20 percent higher once they buy the item you know they're you know you have to pay a couple extra bucks to buy an item buyers aren't going to care so i wouldn't my you know yes you may have a little impact right now but 
at the end of the day, two, three months from now, everything's going to be back to normal as it is. So I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah. And I, but so here's the thing I like. Art says people lowball too much on Mercari. On Mercari, they can't send an offer more than 20% off. I love that about Mercari. They cannot, unless they make a bundle, they cannot lowball you unless they're messaging you, which they do, which they do. But I like to think at least it stops some of them because they're like, oh, I can't send less than this. I wish everywhere would do that. Um, so I have had, we don't get a ton of Mercari sales, but we have been selling about the same. Um, I like the no fees because when I get 40 bucks on a $40 sale and I'm more willing to negotiate on Mercari because I know I'm not paying any fees. Now the buyer's paying the fees. So I'm more willing, like if I'm gonna pay 20% with promoted on eBay or Poshmark, Mercari, they could have a 20% discount, you know, cause I'm not paying the fees. So I I like it, um, but I, it's not a fast platform for us. It never has been. Um, Mercari and Posh are just like little tiny add-ons. I th it really depends on what you sell. Like Brandon was saying, like Mercari is very specific as far as like certain things do better there. Toys, right. video I'm games, vintage clothing, clothing sell oh, good yeah. there. You know? So it just depends yeah. what you're selling. Yeah, shoes do pretty well too for me yeah, on shoes, Mercari. Yep. All right, here's Brandon to tell you guys bye and what he's got going on and then Mojo will and then me and Rod. So here's Brandon. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed uh this whole interaction, if you guys want to follow me over on YouTube or any social media platforms, it's the Georgia Picker. Uh, nothing really crazy going on this week. I am looking at about two or three storage units. But, however, I am going to Disney on Monday, and I'll be there until Friday. And uh, I'm very excited about that because that will be my one-and-done vacation for the year. So, uh, But other than that, just your normal grind, uh, you know, going out there to find stuff. And uh, I'm going to be working up until my vacation. So uh, wish me luck, and uh, hopefully, guys, uh, hopefully I get to see you guys over there on the uh, YouTube channel. Perfect. Here's Mojo. Guys, hey, if you're ever on the lowlands of Ohio, stop by the Mojo Dojo. Yeah. See this little angry chihuahua. Check out our YouTube too. channel. You can kind of see where we get a lot of the stuff from, some of our endeavors. Um, and we got a little Mojo comedy show this Friday or this Saturday, 420, if you guys are in the lowland area. Hit us up on Instagram. And, uh, yeah. Instagram, Mojo underscore Dojo underscore Threads. That was a lot of fun. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Thank you, guys. Rod, what you got going on? These guests were awesome, guys. So make sure you give them both a follow for us. We do appreciate that. Both of them coming on here tonight. So appreciate each and every one of you guys. Uh, Thanks for, for me, us. Yes, sir. Thank you for having us. I, uh, I'm going to be dropping a new video on my Picking and Punching channel tomorrow. And then on Thursday, I'll be dropping a new video on my Flipping and Punching channel. If you guys listen to Trash to Cash, um, if you guys listen to that one today, the Trash to Cash podcast, you, you may have heard a talk briefly talk about the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me at a garage sale. And uh, I'll be talking more about that my, on my Thursday video. So uh, mm. come check that out. It may or may not be a team. All right. I, so. just say, I think I know what you're talking about. Uh -oh. I did listen to that. So yeah. <laughs> Next week we're having Yenzi picker and reseller madness Two new people again for you guys, some new faces. I will be selling live on knickknacks tomorrow night at 6 p.m. And I'm changing it up. I'm not doing sterling. We're doing vintage costume brooches and jewelry boxes. Really, really nice jewelry boxes. So we'll be on knickknacks tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. And I am crazy and will be dropping a video on both of my channels tomorrow, the Nurse Flipper and on Cat Treasure Hunting. Um, every three weeks or so, they fall on the same day. But then I get a day off in between. Um, and then Saturday is the end of my estate sterling. So I've dropped everything down to $15 starts. There's some Native American in there. I'm leaving everything. There's some $150, $200 items in that sale starting at $15. And I think Brooke has started cataloging it over on Whatnot if you want to check that out. Oh, um, I love jewelry. <laughs> that, so jewelry is all I really do on Especially Whatnot. Sterling. And oh, and I love and I just got in more antique uh, Victorian trading cards. I love seeing from the 1800s yeah. advertisement. I just love cool. looking at them. 
I don't make much money, but they're so cool no, to look at. But who so. cares? Doing yeah, yeah. I will. I know. Like knickknack, knick, 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 DM. I got Sometimes it. you gotta, you gotta like it. Thank you guys so much for coming on. You guys, their links are in the description. If you are watching us afterward, Dalton, would you like to tell them good night? They can't see you down there. Are you coming up? He says the puppy's so cute. He's been saying so cute, so cute, so cute yeah, over and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, if you're ever around Ohio, he, three of them. he has three of them. Yeah, if we go up there, we'll go visit the puppy. All right. Bye, guys. Yeah. Yeah.